a really popular name with the TNA fan base for a while has been Santana, now known as Mike Santana. Obviously, when they were part of LAX once upon a time, they were probably the most overact in the company, I think, when they were, were doing their thing. And they they always had uh, feuds that the fans were invested in, whether it was with the OGs, whether it was with the Lucha Brothers. Um, you know, they they initially came on attacking Decay. I think they used them to write a abyss out of the company, if I remember correctly. But everything that LAX did when they were around with Impact, the fans were fairly invested in. They were very popular. Uh, the heel run didn't last too terribly long because they just, you know, they just really, really got over. It was a big loss when they took off for the newly formed AEW. And frankly, they probably would have, if say there was no AEW, they probably would have left for, for uh, NXT. And, um, you know, I remember Impact was rumored to have given them a pretty good offer, a main event um, talent type of offer. But I think the team had just it had come to um, to a point where a lot of wrestlers do who are part of the company where they just say, what can I do? What can I do anymore? You know, like I've done it all, basically. Uh, and And, you know. I think from the very beginning, people could see within Santana that there was some singles star talent there. But I don't think that would, would, would have ever been in the cards for Impact to split them up. They were just too popular as a team. But they did go to AEW. They were building up at, at the time, which was a, the best tag division in wrestling. And of course, uh, those are the two of the guys you want to add to it. You know, uh, they were part of the first, I believe, first ever main event of Dynamite history. So they did some good things in AEW. Uh, they never wrestled the Lucha Brothers, which was crazy. They never got a run with the tag titles. They were a part of big angles, but there was a lot left on the table when it came to or uh, Santana and Ortiz, proud and powerful. And the rumblings have been been coming up for a while that. You know, he wasn't he wasn't happy there or the the tag team wasn't happy. There was just a lot of rumors over the year. And the basis of this upload right now is on the Chris Van Vliet show. If you guys listen to his podcast, I mean, he does a great job with interviews. He uh, his new one has Mike Santana. And it's an excellent tell all interview and i mean it's definitely one to check out i would i would really really recommend it but when he was um when he ultimately left AEW the TNA fan base right away so we want we want him you know he can be a top guy here and i'm not going to lie I, w- I was one of the first people to say he's not coming here like the dude wants to wrestle for NXT and I'm only basing that off rumors. But after I listened to the interview, my impression was always that he wanted to go to NXT, but Ortiz wanted AEW. And now that I've listened to the interview, that's not the case. So my tune has changed a little bit. Because again, I can only go with the information that I'm given. And at the really at the end of this thing, he's talking about free agency. And and Chris asked, is TNA, is a TNA return possible? And he said, everything is on the table. And by that, he even means, I, I believe he even means going back to AEW as a single star with a push, you know, the NXT WWE system. But when you listen to this interview and and realize how important family is to this guy, it really made me think, you know what? TNA really may be an option. He is not striking me as doing this for the money at this point. I think what he kind of alluded to with his partner was that with Ortiz, who I I like a lot as well, he kind of alluded to him being comfortable in his spot there. They were making good money. Like why, 
fuck with it. You understand what I'm saying? Where Mike Santana seems to want to do more with his talents and ability. Like he wants to be, he wants with the opportunity to be that dude. Like he doesn't want to be a tag team wrestler again. He wants to be in the mix. He wants to be at the top. Would that happen at AEW? No. Would it happen in NXT? Very possibly. Would it happen on the main roster? Excuse me, main roster? Probably not. So if money is not an issue, if right now his his indie rate is is good to go, he's able to get that work. Um, you know, doing indie shows, and he actually had his shoot job. He actually had a really good job as well. I can't, I don't remember exactly what it was to repeat it, but um, he seems like he's actually a pretty educated dude. And he, dude, he has a lot to fall back on. So if he's not motivated by money, TNA could be a home. He talked about the return to TNA video. He said that was the, you know, one of the coolest things he's ever seen. Talking about Frankie come out the water, and he kind of he he glowingly spoke of TNA, the return to TNA, the people there, and uh, it wasn't what I expected. It really it really wasn't. So. I would say I was very pessimistic on his potential return to TNA because it's always a money game. I, I know the TNA fan base does not want to admit that. And they want, and they, they're always quick to say Anthem has money and they think Anthem is making competitive offers. Depends what you mean by competitive, but they're not giving uh, the offers that they're going to get elsewhere. Okay. So you just you just got to get that out of your system. So I'm thinking, okay, it's not going to happen. He is not. I I had told people because a lot of people messaged me about it, and I said I don't think he's looking for a downgrade as far as company size. Like he, you know, he's part of the second biggest company. He was on the show when it in a prominent role when it had its biggest numbers. You know, he took part in all the stadium stampede matches. Like he he's. He's cemented into the legacy of that company there. And I'm just like, I don't see him just saying, hey, I'm going to I'm gonna take a step down as far as company goes. But after listening to the interview, again, I really recommend checking it out. He really makes you think this could be very much be a possibility. You know, and they're talking right now, the rumors, which, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. But the rumors are saying that they're just giving out per per deal, excuse me, per uh, appearance deals. But you got to re- remember that doesn't always necessarily mean I'm paying your indie rate. If you're like the good hands or something like that, we're paying your indie rate. You understand? If you're fucking moose and they said, Hey, we're going to pay you per appearance. I don't think they're paying moose the indie rate. I think it's, it's most likely, again, this is just me. It's just pure speculation. It's most likely just a prorated amount on their salary. You know, so if they if they go if they do two days of work that month, well, what were they gonna make on their salary that month? Well, maybe they do make that amount, but the next month they miss a day because they're hurt, they're sick, they're injured. Well, now they don't get paid. You know, so I still think there's tears to this shit. I don't think ev- I don't think TNA's just like, hey, we're paying everyone's indie rate. I don't I don't think that. Um, I could be wrong. But I don't think so. So in that sense, yeah, you know, can you make a competitive offer for the dates that he does? That's very, very possible. Um, but this is a company where he can potentially win the title. He probably would, just knowing the way TNA books. I'm just, I'm not trying to be like negative, but let's just be realist here for a second. The way that they book, when someone comes from here or comes from there, and especially with his history already within the company. He could be that dude. He could have a run with the title. I can 100% see it. So I, I am now more optimistic that this is a thing, that this could be a thing. And maybe it's only a thing for a few dates, but I do think it could be a thing. He he definitely has interest in being a family man. And I don't know that the NXT schedule, even though they said they would allow him to live in New York still, I don't know if it um, meets what he's looking for. Because he's he's checking a lot of things off the list: family time, being at the top of the card, being valued, you know, be, not having to work tag team matches. 
TNA may be a place to make that happen. 